So I just thought we could start today's video by looking at a clip from the Y Combinator podcast. So at Y Combinator they had the OpenAI over and they had a hackathon using the O1 model. And I just thought they mentioned something interesting here using the full model versus the preview model. So I wanted to go back to O1, try to build a reasoning AI agent. So I thought I can just make a full tutorial here where we use cursor. We're gonna use it, do it like step uh, by step. So we're gonna do the full workflow. So you can just dive right in and do this yourself when uh, O1 comes out, you are ready to go, right? So uh, let's just listen to this clip, what they say about the uh, O1 hackathon and the results they experienced. And then we're gonna go over to Cursor and start yeah, building this agent. Diana is gonna show a cool demo of it doing exactly that. <laughs> it's fun because we run this um, hackathon with OpenAI and Sam came over and judge the winners. And one of the participants was actually chip design. This company is called Diode Computer. I think we mentioned them earlier. What they're building is basically AI designer for circuit design. Up to GPT-4, which is this company had built, it actually put some constraints and was able to automate a lot of the uh, schematic design that you as a human had to design what components it needed to go and the design. And to some extent, the routing, it was simple, which is still pretty cool up to that point. So they were able to automate all that. But the thing that they demonstrated now with O1 was actually able to do the system design and component selection, which is crazy. So it would be able to read all the data sheets and select the right components. So the way the product would work, it could say, I want to build a wearable heart rate monitor with an accelerometer and a microcontroller, very high level. And given this constraint and looking at the database, it would be able to match the specific accelerometer and microcontroller and heart rate monitor sensor and connect it and just output the end result. So yeah, I just thought that was pretty cool. And that's why I kind of wanted to go back to O1 again before we get the full release and build something that we kind of are ready to just slot in the new O1 model if we get it, uh, yeah, hopefully this year, maybe on ChatGPT's second birthday coming up in like a week, is it? Something like that. So yeah, let's just head over to Cursor and build out the agent and see what we can do with it. Okay, so the first thing I always start with is uh, I just wanna make a folder, call it docs, and then I'm gonna go out and collect some documentation we want, right? So I think we want some documentation on, yeah, let's do something on function calling maybe from OpenAI. All right, I think we need that. We probably need just some general OpenAI docs, so that's gonna be probably from the O1 model, how we can run that, and maybe just GPT-4.0 with some tool calling. Is there anything else we need here? Let me just think about this for a second. No, I think that's actually all we need for today. So let's head over to OpenAI here, right? And let's grab some information about function calling. So I'm just gonna copy the documentation they have here on function calling and let's paste that into our markdown file. Okay, so let's paste it in. So that was all I had on function calling. Now let's grab some, just some standard documentation here for the OpenAI chat completions with O1. And I think we want streaming too, so let's go grab that too. So I'm just gonna grab some documentation here from reasoning. So I'm gonna grab this, right? Uh, yeah, we can grab something here from uh, the chat completion. I think that's fine, so let me copy that. So let's just go to chat completion, click on streaming, and we can select O1 preview, and let's just copy this, right? Okay, let's copy that too. Let's go back to cursor, and let's just paste that in, and I think that should be pretty much it, right? So now we have kind of the documentation for streaming O1. Uh, I think that's good. We might want to grab the GPT-4.0. Uh, no, I think we have that in here, right? The code for, yeah, that should be fine. I think we have the tools and we have this GPT-4.0 yeah, setup. I think that's fine. Uh, so now uh, I usually do like a new folder. I just call it tool schema, right? To have our schemas in. I like to do a folder that's just going to be tools. Uh, let's do a main.py, right? Let's also do a dot uh, env. Uh, here we kind of need an open AI API key after a while. 
let's just call let's create a file here in the tool schema let's just call it tool uh, sh schema dot pi or maybe we shouldn't call it the same here let's just call it tool s that should be fine like this and in tools let's create a file that's just gonna be tool use or something dot pi or tool functions we're gonna have our functions here right uh, i think that's a good start uh, so let's open up i think we're just gonna use the chat so i'll do control l we can open up terminal 2 right uh, let's create a virtual environment for this so let's just do create a vn that should be fine submit this and just click command enter and let's create this virtual environment and we can do activate right so let's activate this good okay so we have a virtual environment set up and uh, we want to do like a pip install i think we need open ai we need what else do we need requests maybe let me think let's start with that so let's install OpenAI request. I think we want to do install .env Python, right? So we can do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. We might need some JSON or some other thing, but let's see now. Uh, let's just start with this. So I think we want to start uh, creating maybe like a tool schema here. I think we want to start with that. So let me just come up with a prompt here and we can take it from there. So I know I said uh, schema, but uh, I kind of meant um, uh, function. So what I've done now is I added the function calling documentation here by just clicking this plus sign, right? And I added kind of my empty tool func.py. And the prompt is just going to be create a function call uh, get Bitcoin price that uses the coin gecko API to fetch and return the Bitcoin price. I'm just going to hit enter here. And hopefully this is going to write um, the function we need, right, to fetch the Bitcoin price. So we're not going to do this too complicated now. We're going to try to make it easy to understand and easy to change, right? And it looks like we also get tool here we can use for, so that's good. So let's go to our tool function and paste in this. So yeah, we did install request, good. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I think uh, return data, Bitcoin, USD. Yeah, I forgot to say USD, but that's what I wanted. Uh, I think that looks good. Float, okay. Uh, I think we can actually copy this tool here. Right, this is the schema, right? So let's head to tool schema and tools. Let's paste it in. And let's take a look at the description here. I think we're gonna change to fetches the current Bitcoin price in USD. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, false, uh, we don't need any required. I think that's fine. So let's just say that. So this is our tool schema now for the function we created here to get the Bitcoin price. So I think that's a good start. Uh, I think the next step is just gonna be to get O1 running streaming. And then we're going to add a function using gpt 4 o that can actually use these function calls here. Because O1 preview can't actually use function calling. Hopefully O1 can. Then we can skip this intermediate step here. Uh, but now let's head over to main.py and create our O1 uh, chat completion. So to do that we can just open up a new chat, right? Main.py. Let's grab some documentation. Let's do the OpenAI docs, right? So this OpenAI docs, this contains kind of how we set up O1 preview. Uh, I can see we have a system message here. We have to remove this, right? Because we can't use system message. Uh, okay, that's fine. So let's do this. Let's go to main and let's do a prompt here. So let's start uh, with the prompt, uh, create a function that uses the O1 preview model to answer a user's prompt, use streaming and strip only to return the content. So let's see if we can do that just to get O1 model up and running here. And then we're going to have to add our OpenAI API key and stuff, right? But let's do this first. Okay, so I'm just going to apply this. Uh, I think we can just change the model to 
01 preview here. Okay, so we're gonna take a prompt, right? Uh, we need an example use of this. Uh, okay, I don't know. Okay, so I see this wants to use print here. Uh, let's just let me just change up that. Give me a second. So let's just do print in here instead, I think. And I changed the name to reasoning. We're just gonna take the prompt in, right? Um, I guess we need from dot env import load and let's do um, God. yeah like this. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, let's import OS. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So let's test this now. What's the current Bitcoin price? Um, okay, I'm just going to go grab my API key and put it in here. Okay, so that was done. I have my API key here. Great. Uh, let's try this now and just let's see if this run. So let's do Python main.py. I uh, think this should be fine. What was the question we did? What is the current Bitcoin price? So it's going to be slow, of course, because we are running this reasoning OpenAI model. As of October 2023, the price uh, 28,000 and 30,000. <laughs> okay, that's not correct. Uh, but yeah, I guess this worked. Now uh, we kind of want to move on to create a... I think we need a new function here that we can use GPT-40 to actually use the tool calling we created here and to grab the Bitcoin price and then we can do like an F string here to actually feed the Bitcoin price to the uh, reasoning model 01, right? So for that, uh, I think we're just gonna grab the OpenA tool function calling docs. We're gonna grab our tool functions, right? Uh, we can just grab uh, kind of everything here. I think that's fine. And let's do a prompt here. So the prompt here is just going to be create a function called fetch context in main.py. So I kind of refer to that. That uses the GPT-40 model to do function calling with the get Bitcoin price function, right? That we have in our tool.func.py. Okay. And, and the tool schema from tool S. So that's going to be this tool schema, right? So we have to import those. Write this function. Don't remove the reasoning function. So let's try this. And hopefully now we can add a new function here that can use tool calling and we can actually fetch the live Bitcoin price into an F string here, right? Okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, we got the function fetch context from tools, tools, that looks good. Tool choice auto, so that's gonna do use it when you can. So this can fetch the Bitcoin price, looks good. Uh, get Bitcoin price, okay. Second completion. Uh, I think we need to send the function results back to the model. No, we don't need to do that. I think we uh, we need to we're gonna send this to the reasoning model. So I'm gonna change that up. But for now, let's just add this. So this looks good. Uh, but we need to import our tools here. So let's do from tool schema from tools import that function. Good. Uh, that should be pretty much it, right? I think so. So we can try to fetch the context now just to see if it works. So let's do main.py. See if we can grab the price. Yeah, $96,000. So that looks pretty good. So the next step now is going to be to try to send this to our O1 reasoning model. So we kind of get the live Bitcoin price, right? So I'm just gonna try with the prompt. We can now fetch the Bitcoin price. Next step is to feed the Bitcoin price we get from our agent to the reasoning model. Uh, I think I'm gonna add O1 preview here, right? So let's do preview. Uh, using an F string, please resolve this. So I'm just gonna run this, right? Okay. Okay, so I think this looks pretty good now. Uh, we still kind of have, uh, of course, our reasoning function. We have our fetch context. So here we're gonna send, uh, what is the current Bitcoin price? So we're gonna fetch that, right? Uh, now you can see we have a set of F strings further down here. If we go back down here, you can see uh, we have the Bitcoin info. So this is gonna be the F string where we kind of fetch the Bitcoin price, right? 
uh, functional response price. Uh, we're gonna grab the functional response currency. That's hopefully gonna be USD and the timestamps, right? So we kind of have the date, currency, and the Bitcoin price. And we're gonna feed this information into our prompt here or into our function that takes in kind of our prompt and the Bitcoin price. Uh, right, okay. And we're gonna feed the prompt is gonna be look at the current Bitcoin price and explain what this means for the market. So <laughs> it's not perfect, but let's see if it works now. And hopefully we can pull in the correct Bitcoin price. And let's hear what the O1 model is gonna reason about this Bitcoin price, right? So let's run python.main.py here. Uh, hopefully the streaming, it works. I think it does. It should work now with the O1 models. But you can see, it's doing this reasoning thing behind the scene here. Yeah, that is working, right? So you can see if the current Bitcoin price is $96,000 as of November 25th, 2024. Yeah, that's today. Uh, here what is what this could mean for the market of cryptocurrency. Increased institutional adoption. Yeah, that's correct. Positive regulatory developments. I think that's because of the Trump administration are more positive to cryptocurrency macroeconomic factors so ongoing concerns about inflation currency devaluation leading alternative store of value with bitcoin perceived as digital gold okay technological advancement advancements halving event impact uh, i think that was earlier this year so but i think the the rise of the previous kind of bull run now on bitcoin has been because of the trump administration administration right uh, of course we have the market sentiment and fomo that's a big part of it too we've seen a lot of fomo right fear of missing out lately so everyone is piling onto the steep increase in price so you can see it. such price levels in indicate strong bullish sentiment and possibly a sustained upward trend driven by positive feedback loops that's pretty good global adoption and use cases risk and volatility so there's a, some pretty cool information here just from this simple, simple, uh, yeah, tool call we did. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. And we could have gone much deeper here, uh, but I think this is a kind of a smart way to root around uh, that we can't do any tool calls using O1. So instead we created our own tool call using GPT-40 that uses the CoinGecko uh, API to go fetch the Bitcoin price. And we just use an F string here to feed it into our prompt, right? So we kind of do a work around uh, the function calling that we can't do yet with O1. Um, but uh, I think this system is kind of set up now. And hopefully if we get the full O1 model, we're going to keep building on this, right? So let's say we could set this to O1 now. Uh, I don't think it's released, but let's see. <laughs> So that was kind of my plan today, just a simple setup. Yeah, we can't use that. So just a simple setup of how you can get ready, start testing out O1, and hopefully we can just do function calling so we can skip the part here with GPT-40 and just go straight in to start using and building tools for O1. And then when we do that, we're gonna dive deeper into how we can try to use the reasoning capabilities of O1 of O1 to kind of dive deeper into subjects. I have some cool ideas for that, I think, but we're gonna save that for when O1 is released. So hopefully you learned something today. Uh, I'm gonna just put this code, most likely just uh, in a link in the description to a GitHub. So you can just, yeah, grab it from there. And if you don't wanna follow the tutorial, but I suggest follow the tutorial kind of workflow I use here in Cursor. I think you can learn something from that if you want to try that out. But other than that, thank you for tuning in for this tutorial. Uh, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Uh, in the next video, I might find the top comment and maybe answer it. We'll see. Other than that, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day and we speak soon.